Good morning, good morning. Here we are, lined up, primed, ready for our market update, our monthly market update. Dustin's gonna be joining us here in a few and talking about interest rates kind of the hot topic of the moment. I am going to go through our market update, what's been happening in the real estate market over the last month. How did October close out as compared to October of last year and October of 2020? Just to give you some perspective on where things are going with that. Um, but before I do that, I want to just encourage you, if you haven't seen it, on our um, team Facebook page, yesterday evening, a video was released. Um, it's a collaboration video with Uptown Columbus. It's on YouTube, so you've got to go to YouTube to view it, uh, which means you'll have to click the link uh, that I provided on our website. But it is a collaboration. The video is specifically about kind of areas in, in living in uptown Columbus, but the effort is to really drive a lot of good positive information into the world the YouTube world about Columbus, Georgia, and specifically about Uptown Columbus. So this collaboration with Uptown Columbus has multiple businesses in Uptown that are part of this video you know, program that we're doing and really trying to get information out about Uptown and spotlighting businesses and whatnot. So we took part in that and it's such a great thing. I have to say, if I'm being truthful, of course, I love the video that we were able to put together with In Color, but the Frank Sally video is hysterical. If you have a sense of humor and you love people that have great humor, Frank's Alley's video is it, I have been rolling laughing at it. It was perfection. So I want you to click on our video and watch it, but I also want you to watch that and the other businesses that are a part of this series. The goal for this series is to get a million views on these videos. So please pay, take part in that. Go to YouTube. You can go to the Uptown Columbus um, their YouTube page and watch it. I will drop a link to our team video that we did for this program. I'll drop that into the comments after this video um, is done. And then that will take you to the Uptown Columbus page where you can also watch the other videos. So please take part in that. Be one of the clicks, be one of the views that helps bring great positive attention to our Uptown area. So, okay, enough of that. Let me move on to market updates and what's been happening in our local real estate market over the last month. Um, of course, as always, we're going to start with Muskogee and Harris County, looking at how things ended out for October and how that compares to the last two Octobers, um, just again, to kind of give you some perspective on what's happening in the market. So first of all, closed sales for October in Muskogee and Harris County, there were about 221 closed sales. In 2021, there were 311 closed sales. And and in 2020, there were 313 closed sales. So we're definitely seeing some numbers dropping down. That's not a surprise. That's kind of the way it's been trending. Um, it's not anything that shocks me or appalls me or anything like that. It's just part of the ebbs and flows of market and is certainly a sign of what the times are and impact that interest rates are having on the buying and selling market. Um, so number of days on the market on average for October was about 30 days. In 2021, it was 32 days. And in 2020, it was 50 days. So overall, we still are averaging fairly low time on the market, even though we're seeing um, you know, fewer sales. So what that means is we're having some listings that are sitting longer and some that are closing out more quickly. So I think what we're gonna see trending in the coming months as some of these properties that have been on the market for 30 plus days where maybe price reductions are happening, I think what we're gonna see is our average days on the market are gonna start ticking up a little bit more going into for first quarter of next year. So I could be wrong about that, 
Um, but it's certainly something we'll be watching and paying close attention to. Average sales price for 2022 was about 200 and, or for October 2022, was about 244,800. In 2021, October, it was 230,000. And in 2020, it was 223,000. List to sale price percent. So looking at what did homes list for versus what they closed out for. And this is this is looking at final list price. It doesn't necessarily mean it was the initial list price. There could have been a price reduction. Again, we're seeing a lot more of that these days. Um, but list to sale price for October 2022 was 98.36. In 2021, it was 99.03. And in 2020, it was 98.19. So still not huge negotiations happening, but we're seeing where things might have been listed at one price and they're selling out with some type of negotiation off of list price, but nothing significant, nothing that is, yeah, you know, we're not seeing um, just drastic change in, in buyer market from that perspective. Um, right now in Muskogee and Harris County, there are approximately 443 active listings and 297 pending listings. Now, this is where we have a really big shift and where we're going to see this in the coming months, the difference. We're already feeling the difference, but we're certainly going to feel it in the coming months. In 2021, there were 417 active listings around this same time of year and 522 pending sales. So right now, there are approximately 297 pending sales this time last year there were about 522 so that is a very big difference in actual closed volume that is to come down the road over the next probably 30 to 60 days so what you're going to see is from a volume perspective in our real estate market the overall sales volume is probably going to end up being down um, for the, the end of this year. And I don't think that's a big surprise because it's already down now, but it'll be interesting to see how things carry over into first quarter of next year. And I still can't believe we're already talking about first quarter of 2023. Um, but nonetheless, that pending sales number, two nine, approximately 297 now, and this time last year it was 522. That's a very big difference in homes under contract, the number of homes that are pending sale and coming up on closing. So something to just be aware of and watch. Uh, okay, looking at Russell and Lee County for October, there were 116 closed sales. In 2021, there were 169. And in 2020, there were 170 closed sales. Average time on the market for 2022 October was about 26 days. In 2021, it was 27 days. And in 2020, it was about 51 days. Average sales price for October 2022 in Russell and Lee County was about $261,100. In 2021, it was $222,000. And in 2020, it was about $210,300. So we've certainly, if looking at Muskogee, Harris, Lee, and Russell counties, we certainly have seen some great increase in value over the last three years, great increase in um, overall sales price. Again, we're not seeing big, we're not seeing those numbers pulling back drastically, but they definitely are leveling out. I don't think we're going to see the exponential growth in market value going forward with the current rate environment that we saw over the last couple of years. But we're glad to have the growth that we did. I think some of that is going to hold at a main level. Um, list to sale price percent for October 2022 in Russell and Lee County, it was 99.74. In 2021, it was 100.67. And in 20 in 2020, it was 99 percent. So um, we're we're back under slightly under that 100 percent list to sale price, which means we're getting some marginal negotiations happening off of list price. 
Currently, there are about 223 active listings in the East Alabama Board of Realtors and about 198 pending sales. This same time last year, there were about 122 active listings and 286 pending sales. So you can see we have from last year to this year, last year there were about 122 active listings. This year there are about 223. We've got more inventory. Last year there were about a, a hundred, or excuse me, 286 pending sales at this time. Now there's only 198. It's a definite change in market. Again, this has been building and happening really since probably, um, you know, late spring, we've started to see this shift as rates started to rise. So none of this is shocking. None of it is a big surprise. It does change the environment for real estate. And, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again, it's probably not a popular thing to hear, but you never really know where the top of the market was until it's behind you. And folks, it is definitely behind us. If you were holding out as a seller to hit that top of the market, bad news, you missed it. <laughs> Good news for buyers is while rates are up, you do have great buyer opportunity now. We are seeing more inventory come into the market. It's not nearly as competitive as it was this time last year. So yes, rates are up and we're gonna talk about that with Dustin here in just a second, but you've got buying opportunity. Whereas, you know, this time last year, it felt impossible for some buyers. And regardless of interest rate, you, of course, Dustin would be the one to look at this and really tell you based on your specific circumstance. But if you're looking at buying versus renting, our rental market is crazy high for what you get based on the house that you're renting and the space and condition and all these things, what you're going to pay in rent versus paying a, a slightly higher or maybe a little more than slightly higher interest rate year over year you're still in a better position buying a home in most cases. I'm not going to say every case because those are individual, but in most cases, you're still probably better off buying a home. Um, so with that, let's bring Dustin in and let him kind of give us the lowdown on rates and what's happening with all of that. Hey. Take it away, Dustin. All give right. us the good, so, the bad, the ugly, whatever it might be. <laughs> well, rates are a little bit higher than the last time we spoke. Um, you know, Do you know what, where did rates end up yesterday? So rates ended up, it's, it's a little bit tricky. So if you've got, let's just, we've talked before about paying discount points. So if you are willing to pay discount points and that's just a, a charge that's associated with the rate to get a lower interest rate, which is becoming the norm. Um, you know, don't be surprised that if you find yourself in, in on a conventional loan around six, seven, five. Um, with a discount, if you're wanting just a par rate that no fees are attached to, do not be shocked if you see that over 7%. Now, I'm not saying way in sevens, but seven flat, 7.125. Um, VA is almost the same. Um, so you could see yourself kind of in the mid sixes. Um, I think today it's around 6.75 or so. Um, so not a big drastic jump between those two, um, but compared to 30 days ago, we're probably about a half a point different than we were, you know, than we are right now. So, um, yeah, it's it's been volatile. So it's been a little crazy yeah. out there in the rate market. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little crazy. You know, yesterday the Fed did another seventy-five basis point rate hike. Um, that has some immediate effects. You know, generally in the past we've seen they've done this almost every single month. Um, the first forty-eight hours after that have been pretty volatile, but they've ended up ended up kind of settling down and ending up where they were prior to the rate hike. So we'll see where it all shakes out Friday. You know, and and Monday we'll see what it looks like. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked to see them go right back to where they were. So, and then later you know, this month, crossed. they have some inflation reporting we that do. will come out. Um, we're hopeful. hopeful. <laughs> yeah, hopeful. <laughs> we yeah. didn't even plan that. No. We're hopeful for some good news. Um, we'll see at least some positive, some positive news of some type. Um, and Dustin and I are going to be really watching for that report, and definitely will bring you the information with regard to that. Right. And, and Kim, me and Kim spoke a little bit as far as um, just how the rates are right now, how the environment is and how that's impacting a buyer's ability to buy. Um, you know, rates have been kind of all over the place from a standpoint of they may put an offer on a home on a Friday 
um, and not get an answer from that seller, maybe because there's multiple offers, maybe because you know they're just waiting it out to see if something better comes along by Monday, um, and that buyer is not a buyer anymore on Monday, um, or the or the the fees that are associated with the rate that they need to become a buyer are so much higher just in a you know 24 48 hour period that it drastically changes what they can do and what they you know what they want to do. So and what um, that means from a from a seller perspective is you know there this time a cup last year this time last year you might put your house on the market and say hey we're leaving it out there for four or five days people can make offers multiple offers would come in and then you're kind of cherry picking obviously what the best of those offers are the cream that rises to the top Correct. now in the rate environment that we're in it is it is really volatile compared to what we've seen in a very long time right so what happens is a buyer makes an offer based on a rate they're quoted from their mortgage originator that day Correct. and they feel good about that offer the seller if you decide to wait oh you know i'm going to see like i said can we get something better and you don't really try to go ahead and work that buyer at the moment that you have them that buyer is trying to get locked into a rate that is what most correct, buyers want to do right now and they cannot lock into a rate without a binding contract agreement so if you postpone that process as a seller you could very well see again a buyer that's a buyer on thursday or friday and by monday rates have completely changed and now they're not interested in that price point anymore correct so something to think about from a negotiating standpoint side as far as like being a seller not trying to hold out too long on working on an offer in hand now I'm not saying just take something because it's in hand right. if it's not a good offer it's not a good right. offer but if it's a good offer if it's something that seems workable then you know being proactive in that in this rate environment can actually make or break the deal beyond anything else because of the changing rates and how quickly they're moving right now right i mean and it also changes you know the closing costs closing costs mm -hmm. can change drastically from day to day um and it, and it was not like that the past two years we had a yeah. lot of stability in, in the interest rate market and we did not see big fluctuations in cost um you know, just from yesterday to today, um, if you were to buy, you know, let's, let's say we quoted you something on a $300,000 house yesterday at two o'clock. Um, and let's say that that charge was $3,000. So we were charging you 1% of the loan amount for that rate. Um, by five o'clock, that would have cost you $4,500. So just in two or three hours, we had a $1,500 swing in the That's same it. exact rate. Um, on somebody that was offering on a home. So it, it, it's, it changes drastically. It's not like that every day, but it is real and it does happen. Um, so and I think Dustin and I were talking about this and he's seeing it on, with contracts as well. What's happening now is over the last couple of years, you were seeing contracts where buyers really weren't asking for any closing costs. Right. You know, they were maybe willing to pay cash out of pocket over appraised value. A lot of these circumstances, they were great when we had such a phenomenal rate environment, but now because of these higher rates and the fact that people are having to spend more money to buy down their rate, now they're no longer really willing to pay over appraised value because they need that cash to pay down their rate right. or they're asking for a little bit more closing costs than what right. they've been asking for in the past because they've got to use some of the cash they would have used for their closing costs to buy down the rate. Right. We're seeing that a lot. I mean, that is, I mean, you may have somebody, they may only be asking you for closing costs for the sole purpose of that interest rate. Um, yeah. So they can have normal closing costs again. Um, so we, we've seen a lot of that. So it's been volatile. You know, like we said, we do have a report coming out um, next week that we are hoping regarding inflation that will kind of show us that we're getting to a uh, maybe a peak and starting to see a decline. So maybe that will be kind of the turning point. Um, but, you know, if you, we'll if see. You, lock, lock, <laughs> lock them if you got them. So if you can lock it, lock it. So Lock it like it's hot? Yes, lock, lock it. So I, <laughs> I, don't I feel like if we did it. TikTok, which we don't, that would be a great TikTok video. Might have to do Lock one. Lock it if it's hot. Might have to do one. <laughs> 
Okay, all right. So that's our latest update on interest rates, what's happening in the local real estate market, kind of the rundown on everything. Um, we also wanted to briefly mention talking about loan assumptions. That is a question that's coming up a lot right now. Um, and for good reason. I've actually got some clients that are we're selling their house and the buyer is assuming their VA loan. And so we're working through what that process is. It's a pretty specific and detailed process. Um, it, that's a whole nother video. So Dustin right. and I are going to work on putting together a video about loan assumptions to help you better understand what that is. It's typically on FHA and VA loans. Those are, those are assumable loans. Conventional loans are typically not assumable. I'm not going right. to say there's never been an assumable conventional loan in right. the history of history. Um, but typically, you're going to see it on FHA and VA loans. And again, there's a lot to it. But for the right people in the right circumstance, it could be a great way to be able to get an amazing interest rate that you can no longer get now. But there are some specifics that you need to be aware of. It's not a product, you know, loan assumption is not gonna work for everyone. So again, we're gonna get dive deeper into that in another video. So stay tuned for that, because that's a topic all on its own. Uh, but we'll let you know when that's coming out and we're gonna do that soon so that people can have information about loan assumptions, how they work, if it's a potentially a good fit for you. Um, as a seller, do you have a loan that it could be attractive for somebody else to assume? And does that give you a greater position maybe in the market? So anyhow, anything else you wanna to add to it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay. It'll be okay. We are not. I, I do think we're we're getting close. So we'll see. Just hang in there. I still think buying is worth it. I just don't. When you look at the numbers, it doesn't make sense to rent. I mean, especially yeah. with, as Kim said about the rental market. You so when you really break down the numbers and you look at what you can still buy for, um, and and the rental market follows us. So they're going to yeah. follow these investors, people that are buying homes to rent them out. They're getting the same rates that you're getting to buy. And I so. was like, I just happened, I was looking through some stuff in the MLS and I happened to see um, a house that hit the market for rent in Harris County. Um, I don't remember what city, I just remember it's in Harris County. Um, and it was like maybe 1,900 square feet renting for $2,300 Ooh. a month. Yeah, that's unreal. Twenty three. That's unreal. I mean, that's unreal. crazy. Yeah. I mean, great if you're the owner of that home. <laughs> Not so much fun if you're the one having to rent it. So keep that kind of thing in mind. Even with higher rates, you know, buying can still make more sense than yeah. renting. Um, so anyhow, just food for thought. Until next time, we will be coming to you before our next market update will be early December. But Dustin and I are going to come to you prior to that with at minimum some loan assumption information and hopefully some good news yep. about the inflation mm -hmm. report. So, um, so you'll be seeing us before Thanksgiving. Stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, have a fabulous November. See you guys soon. See you guys.